Hello, welcome to this video tutorial. This is about Marxist theory, okay, um, and this will help you complete some of the activities that are in your booklet um, from activity, hang on, activity um, 10 onwards, okay, so if you've got your booklet there in front of you, um, I'll begin. So what we're going to do, I'll just explore what is meant by class differences and a little bit of an overview of Marxist theory and then start to think about comparing Marxist with the functionalist, which is on a previous uh, video tutorial. OK. Um, OK. So what is your class? Well, your social class can be defined as a large scale social grouping of people who share common economic resources, which strongly influence the type of lifestyle that they lead. OK, what I would like you to do is just um, add to your booklet economic resources means wealth or money and that wealth and money will influence the type of lifestyle that they're going to live. OK, so you'll see this picture in your booklet and you could annotate that picture and um, this side being the upper class and this side being the ruling um, sorry the working class and I just want you to think um, what would their lifestyles be like so if you were born into a working class family where would you go on holiday what type of clothes would you wear which shop would you do your grocery shopping in um, what pastimes would you do so you finished a hard long day of work where would you go to socialize and then start to think about what about a upper class person and again what type of holidays would they go on what shops would they what shops would they buy, um, shop in um, what clothes what type of food would they eat and things like that just so you can get some examples um, you may want to pause this video tutorial to do that use the internet if you need to so what I'd like you to do activity 10 in your booklet um, just next to them rank the different occupations into a form of hierarchy from number one to number um, I think it's about 14 um, the the most important to the least important okay so just pause it while you do that okay so once you've done that what factors did you use when you were ranking those occupations? Now, typically, students will either use whether it's important about the functionality of that job to society. So, for example, some students tended to put things like doctor, um, police officer, teacher, nurse as being at the top in terms of how important in the job is. Um, other students might um, rank them in order of how well paid they are. So they might put the managing director, the footballer, um, up at the top. Okay, so this will just help you fill in um, the bottom part of activity uh, 10. So what factors did you use when ranking these occupations? And what I wanted you to really think about here is that that often occupations is linked to a person's class. It will influence the lifestyle that they lead. Um, but that it's hard to measure it because different people will measure the importance of social ranking in different ways um, and that is a critique of using this class type system. So your class, your person's social class in our society relates to their status. So typically people with a high status job will be part of a higher social class. Most sociologists define a person's class in terms of their occupation, so this is where the relevance is of activity 10. And for example, your doctors, your solicitors and teachers are often regarded as middle class, whilst occupations such as a shop assistant, electrician and bus driver are often regarded as working class. And what we, what we would usually call these doctors, solicitors, teachers, they are professionals and they would have gone through um, often a degree um, lengthy education to get the skills and qualifications to do that job and that's why I would, we would regard them as a middle class um, occupation um, whereas there are little or less qualifications that are required, required to do um, these working class jobs. So thinking about this then, can you identify problems with the way that class might be measured? Well, 
I just want you to think if you're using a person's occupation to measure the class, you're going to get one statistic. Well, what about your footballer? Your footballer, you would class as being a working class um, pastime, playing football. We would associate it with the lower classes. But yet, someone like Wayne Rooney, from a working class background, is now we would rank him in a higher social class because of the pay and because of the lifestyle that he's starting to lead. So the problems with the way that we measure it um, is, is, is going to differ by the, the factor that you use. If you measure class via job, you're going to get a totally different outcome than if you measure class via pay. Okay. Uh, which class do you think has the most power? Typically, students will um, say that the upper class has the most power because they own everything. They own resources, they own land, they might own media, which will influence um, governments and the way that things are run. Okay. So... This idea of class has really heavily influenced the works of Karl Marx. Okay, just note when he was writing uh, in the 19th century. Uh, and his theory is based on this class system. Now, compared to functionalist, functionalist was the consensus theory where everything was in agreement. Karl Marx, we would uh, um, call it a conflict perspective. And he sees class um, as being in, in conflict and society is divided into two classes one which exploits the labor of the others and it's based on this idea of class so in the same way as we said that functionalist uh, theory is like a human body and we use the orga an organic analogy and the Marxist theory is like a league table so you've got those at the top competing to be the best and those at the bottom regard um, avoiding relegation so just think for a moment, why do they typically stay at the top? What keeps them at the top? And what keeps these at the bottom? So you might be thinking now, oh, it's because they have better players. They get better players. They perform better. They win more matches. They get rewarded through the competitions that they win. So then they get more money to pay on better players. These tend to have a large fan base. So you've got people paying for season tickets, which adds to their wealth. Merchandise, TV rights, all add to these clubs' wealth, which keeps them at the top. Whereas these guys, right at the bottom, they're going to ha have um, less, maybe less skilled players, smaller support. Um, less likely to win competitions, so they're not going to get revenue from there. Um, they might not be on the TV as much, so they're going to lack some TV revenue. So they're never going to be breaking into the top flight. And this is exactly the way in how we see society. That we've got an upper class who manage to stay at the top because they have the wealth, they have the resources that they can invest in themselves. They can invest it into their children, for example, paying for the private education, which then they convert into higher paid jobs, which leads them to stay at the top of this league table. And exactly the same with the lower class, the working class. They're going to have more barriers towards their success, which means that they are more likely to stay at the bottom end of the league table. So this league table is like society, according to Marx. In this capitalist society, capitalist just means it's the pursuit of profit. The bourgeoisie, who are the upper class, the ruling class, exploit the proletariat, who are the working class. The bourgeoisie are powerful. They are the ruling class. They own the means of production, and that means that they own the factories, the machinery, the raw materials, and the land. The proletariat... Uh, the workers who sell the labour in return for wages. These are the working class who work in the factory. So I want you to think about it in this way. You have got a factory. It makes cars. Okay. The bourgeoisie own that factory. The proletariat work in that factory. If you think on one day, um, 
This factory produces 100 cars. The worker will receive a wage. Okay, so let's say, for example, he gets £10 an hour, works 10-hour shift, that's £100. The next day, the factory produces 200 cars. The proletariat worker still gets a £100 wage. If the factory produces 400 cars, the proletariat worker still only gets a hundred pounds. Okay, these bourgeoisie want to produce the goods at the lowest possible cost, so they'll pay the workers as low as possible as they can. Okay, you might want to do a little bit of research into um, the exploitation, for example, of um, the workers that produce night trainers. For example, the workers that work in Primark. Why do these companies choose workers in certain countries like Indonesia and India? Um, because they are wanting to pursue a profit. So thinking about what we've just said, we're looking at activity 11. I want you to identify who is the bourgeoisie, who is the proletariat, who is the most power, least, who is the ruling class, who is the subject class. Just pause that there while you just fill that in. So once you've filled it in, you should be identifying that the ruling class of these up here and that they are the bourgeoisie, they have the most power and that the least power are the subject class, the proletariat, they are the workers, they have the least power, they are those at the bottom. Okay. So just in your booklet, as you turn over onto page 11, you will see um, a little bit of a diagram. It says the superstructure of society and underneath it will say the infrastructure and the economic base. Can you just add to that the economic base is capitalism? Capitalism impacts everything. Okay, According to Marx, capitalism is the cause of everything else in society and everything above it which they, he classes as the superstructure, the media, religion, the government, education, the family and the law, they are all influenced by capitalism. Okay, So everything, all these institutions, such as the family, teaching children that there's going to be someone in charge, like when they get to work, the boss is going to be in charge. Education, teaching children to be on time, to not challenge authority, and to do meaningless boring tasks because that's what capitalism wants they want workers to work in this system okay that's what that table is representing okay so now activity 12 just to finish off can you consider any problems of marxist approach why does it go unchallenged this system goes unchallenged because the media religion education the family all these um, institutions in the superstructure are brainwashing people and stopping them from challenging the system. Okay. Any problems with the way that class is measured in society? Well, it depends how you measure it by job or by occupation. Further criticisms of this theory is that feminists would argue that gender is more important than class. And that this idea that class is now hard to define. Karl Marx, he based his theory on the bourgeoisie and the proletariat, two classes. When in reality, we can identify up to maybe six classes in our society. Okay. So you might want to have a little bit of um, extended study. On Moodle, there is a um, clip which overviews the Marxist and the functionalist theory. So please watch that um, and there's other resources there for you to have a look at. Okay, any questions, you know where I am um, and thank you for listening.